Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some routing. We want to route out this boxer dog, which I uh, found on the internet, and I've modified it as regards to the, the eye and stuff, because it belongs to somebody that once had this dog. Uh, I'm going to do it on pine today. Same procedure as always. Get your template, and this is the way I do it, and you just literally stick it down with some tapered plate just to keep it in place. Place your carbon paper underneath, and you're literally going to draw around it. I actually used a biro on this one, but pencil, I've been known to draw around with a screwdriver head, to be honest. Anything that works for you. Once you've drawn around it, you're also left with a nice pattern like so. And this is what we're going to route out today. Take your time and shade in the areas that you're going to remove. Because you'll go away, sorry about that, you'll go away, come back, before you know it, you'll start routing out the centre of the circle, or the O, should I say, or the, the middle of the 8, and then you realise it's the outside of the 8 you want to do. So take your time to shade it in. The more preparation you can do, the less mistakes you're going to make along the way. Right, that's all done, that's good to go. We're going to remove all the dark sections, like I've said, and maybe we'll put black paint in those, sand it down, some brown around the eye, and that will be good to go. Or we might even pour black resin into this yet. We'll see how this uh, project progresses. As always for me, little CNC bits. Just like little pinheads these. They do have a small shaft on them. 3.175mm. So you require a little collet like that. And that basically is a quarter inch, 6.35mm. Mm, and your little... CNB slots in there nicely, and that now will fit your router no problem. We'll go around all the outlines with this, and that's basically just going to separate the lettering from the backing. So if you come in with a bigger piece, you're not going to have bits chipping away. These little dots here, they could soon fly off. So to play safe, we'll go all the way around them. We've basically made a barrier. So as we get near with the other piece, it's not going to interfere. And when we come to the clear out, which is the bigger sections of the darkness, we're going to try these Millhend carbides, carbon CNC bits. I, I ordered these by mistake, but I'm glad I got them, to be honest. And they literally pick a nice size one. And we're going to try and we'll squeeze it in between this and take all that dark shaded area out. Some of this is quite small, and I'll just remove that with the CNC bit. Okay, that's it. We're good to go. Let's start doing some routing. Okay, you can see from that, we've gone all around our lettering, all around the dog. Don't be overly concerned if you don't get it perfect up to the line. We can always nibble at that when we put on our melen bits. So, and obviously with your inset letters, you want to be on the inside of the line. If we're doing the outset, we'll be on the outside of the line. Never out on the line. Because you want to make it too thin or too thick. Little bits like this I just took out with the CNC bit. And to be honest, a lot of this tighter stuff, you could probably just do it with the CNC bit. Okay, there we have it. You might have noticed in the video that I had a piece of wood along the side there. And all that is, because my router is such a small base, when you come to the letters towards the end, like this one here, you just don't have a lot to balance on. Some people like to have bigger plates on this. 
So you simply get a piece of wood of the same thickness and that just allows you to run up there more smoothly than if that wasn't there. It works for me anyway. Right, we're going to put on our little mill end bits now. Obviously one of these that fits. I've picked one out already. This one will be fine for what we want. They've got nice rough sides and also a rough bottom. So they, they'll tidy the sides up as well as hopefully smooth out the bottom. And this one just fits inside these small numbers here. You can see like so. And we'll use this to clean this out. And all around here, all these little bits will all come out with this. And then we'll start with the letters. If it's taking too long, we'll simply put a bigger piece on. No problem. Same collet as before. So simply remove the CNC bit. Pop in your mill end bit into the router and we're good to go. Let's start clearing this, this out now. Right, we've cleared all that out now. That's the end of our router. We don't need that anymore. We've routed a slit in the back. That's plenty deep enough to hang that on. No problem whatsoever. All the numbers and the lettering, everything's fine. Nice and smooth backing. Do like the mill end bits to say I ordered them by mistake. Right, painting time now. This is quite deep as this one, so you would have got away with resin. But I'm going to use the paint. So before that, just a general tidy up with my Dremel, as always. You don't need to, it's neat enough, but I feel better just for a general. Get these little bits that are fluffing about. So we'll clean up with this, a little rub down with sandpaper, and then we'll spray some kind of sealant on, just stop the paint from bleeding into the signs. This pine's really good. I've done loads of these without any spray on at all, and I've never had any issues. But there's a sanding sealer which you can purchase and you basically spray it on paint it on I believe I've never used it myself and it seals the fibers on the freshly cut wood and this will stop the paint what they call bleeding into the side walls so like in the side of there and it'll bleed in so your lines are not as crisp but like I say with this pine I haven't had any problem but I will spray something on before we paint so general tidy up and then we're heading towards the finishing line. Right, we've done our general tidy up now. We're on the homeward stretch, as you can see from that. Paint time now. We are going to spray some of this sealant on. It says it seals. But there is proper wood sealers that you can get. And it's just a case of spraying it on like that a couple of times. Simple as that. This pine's pretty good and you wouldn't really need that, but I'm just showing it to you guys. Once that's nicely dry, hopefully it'll seal the sides just a little bit. And then we're basically just going to throw this black on. Because this is one colour, you could have sprayed this quite happily. I've never sprayed yet on any of my projects. I prefer a good old fashioned brush. And we will literally brush all the black in like so. And then once that's dry, we'll come on with our mouse sander and sand it all down again. And hopefully it's filled all the gaps that we've carved out today. Right, we'll let this dry. And then we'll start painting. Right, that's all nicely dry, so it's just a case of throwing our black paint in like so. 
You could spray this if you wanted to. It's just something I've never done personally. Once it's dry, have a quick nosy about. If there's certain little bits of wood showing through, you can use a black marker pen and just, just dab it on slowly uh, to, to hide it. I tend to wait for this to dry and then literally just go over it all for a second time. It goes on fairly good. The hardest bits are these little small sections down here. You really got to get a smaller brush like so and just use that to get right inside those gaps. Okay, I'll finish this off and then we'll come back when it's ready to sand down. Right, that's all nicely dry now. We've had a couple of coats on that. Just to get into all those little bits that are a little bit awkward. Now we're going to sand it down. I'm literally going to use a little mouse sander. I think it's an 8120 on there. Give it a good sanding over. And then we'll brush it down and hopefully we should be left with something underneath. Right, I've painted the eye. That's just simple acrylic brown. Nothing too special there to look at. I've had a bit of trouble with this one because it took some sanding off. So I used a belt sander and as it was belt sanding, it was just compacting it all into these small letters and numbers. So I had to go around with whatever I had and clear all that out. So I've made a bit of work for myself there. Either the paint just wasn't quite dry or whatever, but I won't be using a belt sander on this one again, this type anyway. Okay, moving on. The boxer dog itself is actually white with a patch on. Now, you could paint all this white if you wanted to. It's going to be quite a lot of painting. But I quite like the wood itself. It's quite a light wood, you can see. So what I'm going to try and do, and it might work, it might not, is normally I put linseed oil on. Danish oil, tungsten oil is it, so I'm just going to literally try and put the oil just at the back of this dog, so we're going to go around all around, just be careful of it's going to soak in a bit, I don't want it to soak into the dog, and then we'll do the sides, and hopefully that dog might just stand out a little bit then actually putting the paint on, if it goes wrong we'll literally just linseed oil it all, and that's the way we roll, and then when we're finished, just spray a few layers of this on, just give it a bit of a shine. So we're literally just going to put this linseed oil on now. Just boiled linseed oil, nothing too special. And we'll see what it does to the sides, to this wood here. And just knock it down a little bit, just tone it down. You'll notice more on the sides is when it, you can really see the benefit, like so. And hopefully we'll get to just slightly darker background to the dog itself. I'll finish with this off and we'll come back and hopefully we're at the finishing line. Right, that's all nicely dry. We've sprayed on our crystal clear just to give it a little bit of a shine. It's an indoor piece, so I don't want to get too carried away. There's all sorts out there, varnish, lacquers, spa urethane, water-based, oil-based, the list is never ending. I'm quite happy with the background. There's definitely a slight difference in coloration. So that's a nice little touch we will remember for another project. And there you have it. Eight and a half inch by 11 inch router project on pine. Thank you very much for watching.